I think it started Tell now. Tell me when you're ready. Um, yeah. Okay, we're gonna so. make nine of 24 today. I'm gonna show you how it's, how it's made. Your first order of business is to make sure you put in the angle because the drawing has an angle of 15 degrees to it. The back wall is at 15 <clears throat> degrees. You cannot start this particular model until you include that angle. You're gonna add a plane you're going to reference this plane plus the axis that allows it to rotate. When you look at the front plane, that rotation, when you see how this moves, is in a couple of directions. So if your intention is to rotate it, tilt it forward, 15 degrees, that's negative 15. That's how you get the plane to draw. Now you can go ahead and create a sketch on that plane. Now it can get confusing where you're working. So I recommend you work on the front, of, front of the plane, not on the back of the plane. And notice the back is blue and the front is yellowish. So dr draw on the front of the plane. <clears throat> you can do normal too, so you could look at it head on. The other planes could be visually challenging. Turn them off just by highlighting them and changing their visibility. So that way you can look at this plane head on. Now comes the fun part of drawing it. It does look like a large triangle. I do recommend you project geometry, oh, which you can't see anymore because I've turned those planes off. The geometry you want to project are, let's see, eh, not much, just that one plane. The rest is going to come from drawing some construction lines. Okay. So you can draw a reference line out there. I went from the center intentionally, draw another reference line out here. Call them reference lines because they're dashed lines, they're for construction, then I'll turn that off. You're going to start drawing some circles so that they're tangent to that. Whoops, I guess I did not turn construction off. To convert a line that's construction line to an object line, just click on it and change it right there by clicking on that item. Click on this guy, turn that off. Now, for future lines, just make sure that's not on. Okay, the way you know it's not on, it's not blue. Center line is blue, but that's not on. <clears throat> the next circle you draw is gonna be in relationship to this plane. I drew it down there so I could drag it up, but it stays in that position. Now for me, tangent lines, are difficult to draw, so I tend to just draw them way out somewhere. And then literally pick the circle, pick the line, and use my tangent constraint. Okay, pick the circle, pick the line, and it locks that one in. Pick the circle, pick the line, got it? Pick the circle, pick the line, keep it simple. That way I can draw them in quickly without a lot of effort. You see that they're tangent when you wiggle it, as I like to call it, just drag it around, you'll see that they're attached. They're not fully defined to each other. These two down here now, this guy and this guy, I could probably turn into solid lines. Whoops, I just turned them into regular lines now. If I go to isometric, I see them, they're solid, but they're too short. So I gotta drag them out. Drag that out. Then I could trim everything back, whatever parts of the lines I don't need, and also trim the inner parts of the arcs. Now when I look at this head on, getting there, not perfect though obviously. Let's drop in some dimensions. <clears throat> This happens to be 1.25, okay? The dimension from here to here. Because the customer put the dimension in, I'm putting the dimension in. Otherwise, I wouldn't be putting that dimension in. I did function of X just to keep it simple. The arc, the top arc is a radius of 0.875. Remember, 0 0.88 is never 0 0.88. This guy, I can, they're all the same, so I'm just gonna use my equal constraint that all three of these, whoa, are the same. You can see it gets a little odd shape now. But what's missing is C. 
something odd. It's called the height, but I don't know what that height is. There's, there's an error. Well, not an error. There's something I have to think about. This says three inches, but what do we see? That's a vertical height of three inches. That's not a, that is not a, so if I draw off on the side a little sketch here for myself, if I drew a straight line, that's what's three inches tall. Let me just draw that on the side here. And then I draw a line at an angle. This cannot also be three inches tall by default. This has to be a longer length. So if I throw in my dimensional angle, which is 15 degrees, then I actually will find out what the true length of that line needs to be. And go ahead and trim. This is one method of doing this. Keep it simple. Yes, I can solve it mathematically. No, I don't want to. I have no reason to because I have the ability to do it this way. If I didn't have this ability, I wouldn't do it. See, that's three inches high, but if I do a line, which is the hypotenuse, I get its true length. Of course, it's constrained by other objects. Now the only question is, 3.106, that's the actual length of where these exist from each other. So now I can go ahead and drop that dimension here and here. Come on, first I gotta put in the dimension. Or I can pick the circles, it doesn't matter. See that? Now, I can go out here, drop this and say equal to this and hit okay. But this entire thing on the side has to be for construction. Otherwise it'll fight me tooth and nail when I try to extrude this item. Keep that in mind. So there's my math on the side to prove what I'm doing over here. Then I can go to isometric and then extrude my shape. The thickness is 0.5. So there's my thickness. So now I have my shape. I can turn my planes back on, the other ones. Turn everything back on to be visible. The plane that the shape was built on is back here, that little plane in the back, and that's okay. I might, will I need it again? No, so I can actually turn that one off. That way it doesn't fight me for the next thing I gotta do. This thing cannot be built uh, without adding another plane. These shapes are outside of this object. You can't build a horizontally directional extrusion off of an angled face. So I actually have to project geometry of this, uh, not project geometry, um, I will in a moment. I have to create another plane that's the correct distance, which is two and a half, which that is. When I hit okay, this is the plane I have to build on, which is a horizontal plane, a vertical plane, not See that, that's vertical. This is the plane that I'm gonna project to that plane as a reference. Okay, so if I go in this position and I go to project geometry, I literally can pick this and it drops it forward, pick this and it drops it forward, pick this and it drops it forward. Now, I know everything I'm gonna build on here is correct only if these two dimensions are three inches. Ta-da! And I'll accept that. They are. Now why is it three inches? It's not magic. It's how my original sketch was created. Because remember, the length of the hypotenuse cannot be the same as the length of the height of one of its sides. That's just geometry in action. So now I can drill, draw my three circles that will become these one and a quarter inch diameter extrusions. And I'm gonna do a match properties for each one of these. And I like the fact I can just keep going. Till I'm done, then I hit escape. That's sometimes what I forget to do. 
Here's the fun part for those of you that were worried. How on earth are I going to make this extrude to that? The nice part is when you do the extrude and you pick your profiles, you can pick all of them at the same time, all three. And when you change the direction, to, and I'm sorry, change it from distance to two, and you pick that back wall, it will extrude whatever length it needs to regardless of where that is. So even though this first circle needed to only extrude that distance and these other two needed to extrude much further, it doesn't matter, it doesn't care. See that? It'll extrude weight all the way to there. See that? Now this is me moving it manually. You don't want that. That's distance. If you use distance, you see the kind of gap you're going to get? See that gap? Because it can't hug the part. And if you do extrude to the back wall, then you got this back piece that can tangle it. You don't want that. You want it extrude right to that face. That's why you use two. And you pick that. I have to tilt it. Sorry, guys. And you tilt that so you go straight to that face. Now, it extrudes this top right to that face. It extrudes these bottom cylinders right to that face. No extra work to do. Hit OK. There's your basic shape. Okay? You literally have your basic shape done. Next, <clears throat> You use the whole plan to make your counter bores. You will have to pick concentric because they're round cylinders that you're moving to. Pick the dimensions, which is over here. So make sure you identify that it's a counter bore. The larger diameter is 0.875. The smaller diameter is 0.375. The depth of the cut, that's a little cut off. It looks like 0.37. Yeah, that's right. an odd, maybe 0.375 just because I'm picky that way. Three eighths of an inch down. We're gonna hit the plane and the object. Okay, now you're gonna find out that it's discrete. You're gonna be like, well, why can't I pick the other one? It doesn't do that. It's one at a time. Plane. Okay, concentric, the edge. See that? You can only do one at a time. You're not able to do multiple hits. You can, of course, hit apply, and then it stays in the command, and then you just pick the next object, and its side wall, whoops, I've got overlapping, sorry. The, con the dialog box is in the way of the object, so I accidentally hit something. Face, whoops, concentric. So you've got the face and the side wall. And apply. Face, side wall, and apply. That's how you would repeatedly do this command. You can't do it in one shot. It's discrete operations for each one. Then you're done. The last thing you gotta put in is this odd little thing in the back. It's referring to some kind of backbone doesn't give you a lot of good information, which is really annoying. So my advice is you're going to make a notation on the detail drawing, of course. The client is going to have to verify all this information. doesn't tell you where the backbone ends, but we're going to assume, assume you know what that means. We don't assume. The customer has to verify. Nothing's ever assumed. We can create a new sketch. Oops. I'm in a sketch, so I have to get out of that sketch. We're going to create a new sketch on this plane. Draw a line from that spot. We're going to draw it up and across. See how you touch the object. And down. If I want to see through the object, remember to go to View and pick Slice so I can see into the object. Now I'm going to start picking some dimensions. Like, whoops, let me stay in that. Plane and stay in. Did I exit the sketch? Yes, I did. So I'm gonna. That's how easy it is to exit the sketch. So make sure to get back in there. Slice the view. Now I'm gonna go and drop some dimensions. That's gonna be three. Okay. And that's it. This dimension here, that 1.23. We could try to drop that in. Well, if we do, 
could you really try to make this right? It's that bottom line that won't work. So we're going to have to make the shape somewhere else, randomly. <laughs> and I do mean that. As you can tell, I'm making a very random shape. It's attached, but it's not very well defined. If I give this dimension 1.23, make that a priority, and then make this a height of uh, 3, why won't that be constrained? Hmm. So is 1.23 an odd dimension that's not physically possible? Looks like it. Again, back to the customer. They have to verify what they're doing. Remember, the customer is always right. The customer is wrong. Look at rule number one. Now, I'm going to try to make this thing, but we'll see. One point two three. A height of will over constrain the sketch. I wonder why it'll over constrain it. What makes it over constrain? That length and that angle. Because the angle is defined, right? The angle is fifteen degrees. That's the real length, which means this 1.23 dimension is not the dimension of where this rib ends. That's probably the dimension of here to this point, the top point. So I will go back. Again, what do we do? Who do we verify with? The customer. We assume nothing. Back to this. Make sure we drop in the dimension. This is going to be 3 is the height. That's it. That's what it's going to be. Then we go ahead and extrude it. Mid-plane. You know it goes both ways. The dimension says 0 0.31. That's what we'll go with. And that's it. That's what you have done. Okay? And that is how you make 9 of 24 correctly.